Chemists, you're probably going to want to look away, and maybe cover your ears too, as we discuss why chemistry never mattered. Everyone remembers playing with magnets as a kid. Opposite magnets attract and like magnets repel, but unless you're a physicist, you don't often tend to stop and ask how they work. So magnetism occurs due to atoms that make up magnetic materials. Now, if you're even vaguely interested in physics, you will have heard of the concept of spin. Particles and atoms can be thought of as having this intrinsic angular momentum that we call spin. We can think of an atom's spin as being an arrow associated with each atom. The arrow can point in one of two directions, up or down. These are the two different spin states of the atom. So if we consider some kind of magnetic material, the atoms will be arranged in a kind of lattice, but we could even forget about the physical atoms themselves and just consider the lattice of spins. This is known as the Ising model, after Ernest Ising. In the Ising model, spins are arranged in a lattice where each spin can interact with its nearest neighbour. Now intuitively, we'd think of this lattice as being three-dimensional. After all, humans have evolved to live in a three-dimensional world. However, the Ising model is very general, and it also applies to two and one-dimensional materials. Oh, and not forgetting about the slightly more mind-bending four-dimensional materials. Seriously, that's a thing, kind of. But more on that later. Magnetization occurs in material when there is some kind of net alignment of the spins. If all the spins are pointing in the same direction, the material will be highly magnetized. But if they're quite jumbled up, the magnetization will be weak. Now, of course, the magnetization of a material is not fixed. If we heat our magnetic material up, the spin states become more disordered, and we're less likely to find two that align so the material becomes less magnetic. If we cool the material down a lot, the spin states become less disordered and we're more likely to find two that align, so the material becomes more magnetic. It's well verified in experiment that as you heat the material up, it becomes less and less magnetic until it reaches a certain temperature, the Curie temperature. At this point, the magnetization will drop to zero. So theoretical physicists endeavor to apply some rigorous math to this strange phenomenon. It was generally expected and shown in experiments that the magnetization of materials as a function of the temperature followed some kind of power law. Experimentalists decided to estimate these exponents, but were confronted by a strange finding. No matter what substance was being used, the chemistry of the substances was irrelevant. The power always came out the same. For a 2D substance, it was found to be around 0.125, or 1 over 8. By 2D, we mean a sheet about one atom thick, something like graphene. No matter what substance was being used, liquid or solid, the chemistry of the substances had no effect. Power always came out the same. So we go back to the Ising model. The actual purpose of this model is to use it to calculate some properties of materials, like their Curie temperatures and magnetization. One of the most remarkable results in theoretical physics comes from Lars Onsager, who was able to find an exact solution to the two-dimensional Ising model. Onsager was able to use the model and some very cool mathematics to show that for any 2D substance, the exponent for the magnetization power law was always equal to exactly 1 over 8. No chemistry required. It wasn't just magnetization that had this property either. Other quantities like heat capacity also had power laws, and their exponents could be predicted exactly. And most importantly, they are the same for any substance. These exponents are collectively known as critical exponents. The three-dimensional case remains unsolved at the time of making this video, but if you think you've got a bright idea about it, there are some people in Sweden that might give you a nice big prize. That being said, with a sprinkle of quantum field theory, the four-dimensional case has been exactly solved, giving the magnetization exponent as one half. Critical exponents represent something incredibly fundamental and important about the nature of the universe that we inhabit. And don't take what I said about chemistry too seriously. Chemistry is important, and you ignore it at your peril. If you liked this video, and you'd like to find out more about cool science stuff, be sure to subscribe so you catch the next one.